Tonight's message the title is pretty simple. The title of the message tonight is Come Clean. Come Clean. Hebrews chapter 10. Come Clean. And uh, I just learned a couple things here and uh, as I was studying this out and and hope it's a, a blessing to you also just to get some ideas there. Come clean, Hebrews chapter 10. I'm going to read a little bit of a lengthy passage because the context is real important in what we're preaching here. And uh, Hebrews 10 verse uh, 14, it says, For by one offering he hath uh, perfected forever them which are sanctified. Wherefore, the Holy Ghost also witness um, is a witness to us. For after that he had said before, this is my covenant that I will make with them after those days. Saith the Lord, I will put my laws into their hearts and in their minds, and I will write them. And their sins and iniquities will I remember no more. Now, where remissions of the, these is, there is no more uh, offering for sin. Having therefore, brethren, boldness to enter into the holiest of all by the blood of Jesus, and by a new and living way, which he hath consecrated for us through the veil that is to say his flesh and having an high priest over the house of god let us draw near with a true heart a full assurance of faith having our hearts sprinkled uh, from an evil conscience and our bodies washed with pure water let us hold fast the, fast the profession of our faith without wavering for he is faithful that hath promised and let us consider one another and provoke one another unto good works, not forsaking the assembling of ourselves together, as a manner of some is, but exhorting one another, and so much the more, as we see the day approaching. All right, let's pray. We'll get into this lesson. Lord, thank you for the Bible. Thank you for the truth. Lord, is this passage, Lord, I just kept on finding more and more and more in this passage. And uh, Lord, I thank you for the richness of the word. But I pray tonight that you'd help us to uh, get the uh, understanding of your word. And I pray that as we kind of have this focus, uh, especially of coming clean, I pray to help us to see how you want us to approach you and you would speak. I pray that your, your Holy Spirit be in charge and that uh, he would control what I say and, and control our minds and speak um, through a microphone, through a, a tongue, through a human. And uh, Lord, I pray that ultimately, uh, though we're hearing a physical voice, Lord, it's your Holy Spirit speaking the words and uh, speaking to us individually in our minds and hearts. Do a great work. We pray for your blessing and power in Jesus' name. Amen. This, sort of, this chapter is talking about how wonderful salvation is and how it should be celebrated and how great it is to know you're going to heaven, that it is finished, as Jesus said on the cross, and uh, it's wonderful, a completed salvation. Uh, we see in verse uh, uh, 10, for by the which we are sanctified, that's salvation, through the offering that is uh, of, his, of the body of Jesus once for all. It's saying in the context of Hebrews 10 that we don't need to keep having offering of animals over and over and over um, that really couldn't do the, the real thing. It was all a symbol of Jesus who is to come. Jesus did an offering once for all. That's why we don't have to do the sacrifices of the Old Testament anymore. And we're not under that law anymore because it's a wonderful thing. It's been done once for all. If you had to do an offering for every sin you ever did, there wouldn't be any animals left. And uh, and so, and uh, it's wonderful how that Christ finished it. I think of uh, verse 17, it says, And their sins and their iniquities will, re will I remember no more. That's something that humans can't do. <clears throat> um, uh, well, some of us can do it on accident because we have bad memories. Um, but uh, we, we can forgive but not forget. But God says, I forgive and forget. Their sins and iniquities I'll remember no more. That's so comforting that God's not going to bring it back up to us. All right, well, I forgave you, but you know how certain genders do that. I forgave you, but just so you know, um, and, uh, and they bring it back up. And we're not going to say which gender. And, uh, and uh, if you're thinking of a certain gender, um, that's your problem. That's your fault. I could have been talking about either one, but we all know who we're talking about. And uh, but uh, but 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 you know, God is not like that. Our, our sins and our iniquities, He remembers no more. And then they come to an amazing word that some of you who are here Sunday morning might know. In verse nineteen, it says, "Having therefore." There's that word. When you see the word therefore, what do we do? Anybody remember? That's right. We look before to see what is there for. And the word therefore is really important. And because we have such a great salvation, it says, having therefore, brethren, boldness 
to enter into the holiest by the blood of Jesus. And uh, therefore, it's uh, because of this, we have boldness to enter into the holiest place, the Holy of Holies, where the Ark of the Covenant was, where God dwelt. Uh, in, in the Old Testament, only one person, one time a year, the high priest had their big, long process, wearing an exact outfit and doing a bunch of rituals. Only he could go into this place. If he did it wrong, he died. But it says God, uh, Jesus' body, um, was given. It was the veil that separated the holiest place. He gave his life for us, and now we have boldness to walk right into the Holy of Holies, which is the throne of God. It says, we have, because this is so great, this salvation is so great, we have the right to access God. And, and people who say, well, I just don't feel like I can pray that God wants to hear me, and God will hear me, and all this stuff like that. You, you're, you're basing your ability to go into God's presence on your goodness. But that's not what they base it on in the Bible. When you go boldly into God's throne, you just kind of barge on in there and walk in and say, here I am. Um, God says, I want you to do that because I gave you access. Not because you're so good. If you're, if you're going to get, think you got to be good enough, if by the time you think you're good enough, you're gonna not, God's not going to hear from you. You're going to be proud and wrong and blind yourself. When you come, it says, having therefore, brethren, boldness to enter the holiest by the blood of Jesus, by a new and living way which he hath con consecrated for us through the veil, that is to say, his flesh. That's, that's why we can go in there. The veil was a picture of Jesus' flesh when he died. Uh, the veil was ripped in half because the, the separation between God and man was taken out of the way by Jesus dying. And now we have access to walk into the throne of God and talk to God. Go back to Hebrews 4, and it's inviting us again in verse 16. Hebrews 4, 16, Let us therefore come boldly under the throne of grace that we may obtain mercy and find grace to help in time of need. What an amazing promise. God says, hey, come boldly to the throne of grace. Why? To find mercy. If you need mercy, and I need mercy, I need God to not punish me with what I deserve. It says, come boldly to get that mercy. Come boldly for it. And to find grace to help in time of need. It says, come boldly and come get it. It's there. Don't sit there and knock and say, can I come in, oh, Lord? No, he says, come boldly. He says it twice. He says, come boldly into my throne and talk to me about this thing. I want you to have that. The door is open. You have full access. But then he, he, he teaches you this one thing, and it's very important about this. He says, you have full access. Come boldly. But understand, he's going to modify it and say, yes, you have full access. Yes, come boldly, but come properly. But come properly. And, and, and... <clears throat> And, uh, and let's look at Hebrews 10. It says, uh, it says uh, having therefore the boldness enter the holiest of all, that's verse 19, uh, through salvation through Christ, and Christ is the, the high priest in verse 21. It says, let us draw near with a true heart. When you have full access, is that, that does not mean you come inappropriately. So, <clears throat> some we, we, we invite people. I, I invited uh, a guy who's shooting up heroin tonight uh, over in the stairs and trying to witness to him and his girlfriend there, and I invited them to church. And they, they are welcome to come to church. And they have, uh, I want them to come, and I want them to come to church. But we had a guy come to church drunk as a skunk, a guy we know who has a drinking problem, and he came to church uh, way out of line drunk oh, a month ago. Ron, you remember that? way too drunk to be at church and and uh and i said uh, you know what we took him outside just talked to him for a minute and said okay we're gonna pray for you now you need to go home and sober up do we have an open door for people to come to church we want them to come to church yeah but you got to come appropriately you got to come appropriately you walk into church and all you're wearing is a pair of spandex no no it's not appropriate I mean, I mean, have shoes and a shirt on at least, okay? Well, no spandex at all, okay? And uh, but, uh, but uh, especially people who wear them are usually fat guys. And uh, but, uh, but, but look, you, you you come you come appropriately. You invite friends to your house, but there's a time when somebody comes to your house and you say, you know, you know what? No. Uh, guy, guy guy walks. He 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 has right to to go in into the, the White House, and then they invite him and all that stuff. But he just worked on his car, and he's got grease head to toe. Well, yeah, yeah, clean up first. You understand? You have the access. You have the right to be there, but be appropriate. That make sense? 
There are certain restaurants, you can make a reservation, you can have a right to be at that restaurant, but you come in the restaurant and you're, you're too drunk or you're not dressed appropriately, you've got to be dressed a certain way to come into that restaurant. I have heard that. I've never been to one of those restaurants, um, but uh, um, um, but uh, but th that's how you come there. And and there. So yes, you have access. Yes, you have a right to come to God, God's throne. But He says, I want you to come appropriately. And He says a couple things here. He 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 says how to enter. And uh, first, the way to enter, He says, come with full assurance. Um, a matter that's a matter of believing God. It's not a matter of believing yourself. You'll stumble at this if it's a matter of believing yourself. Because the devil reminds you why you don't deserve to be in God's presence. And guess what? He's right. You don't deserve to be in God's presence. Jesus has given you access. So it's like me going to one of those $200 plate restaurants. But somebody else is paying. Okay? And, 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 and Jesus gives me access to... By the way, if you want to try that, we'll have better sermon illustration next time and uh um but but we have that was funny and uh but we have access by jesus not by our goodness not by our righteousness we have the access and so come with full assurance believing that jesus has died for all your sins and he wants you to come boldly in his throne and that's a matter of believing god if you do not come boldly it's because you doubt god it's an insult to god so quit letting the devil lie to you that you can't come to god and god doesn't want to hear from you and god's not going to enjoy your birth no come boldly the Bible says when somebody comes to him, come, don't come double-minded. That man should expect anything from the Lord. Come boldly. It's the way he tells you to pray. And, and look, I've done this uh, my whole Christian life. My whole Christian life, I've come and I, I, I have, I've not believed that God's let me do everything. And I keep on going, you said I could. And I just go do it. And he keeps letting me. And I don't deserve any of it. So what gives you the right to preach? Nothing. God called me and he lets me and he told me to so i do it and i'm going you can't find any better than this that's what you say too and uh and don't say amen and uh and and but but i, I you just believe god you believe god and you do your best but you believe god and his faith in god first come come uh with full assurance it says and uh in, in verse 22, let us draw near with a true heart and full assurance. And we, we, we mentioned that first because he already mentioned that in coming boldly back in verse 9. Second thing he says is just make sure you're saved because that salvation is what gives us that right. We see them in verse 14, uh, for by one offering is sanctified forever them that are sanctified. Those that are sanctified, those who are saved. And... Uh, and uh, and verse 17, their sins and iniquities are remembered no more. Not everybody has access to God. It's for those who have been saved by, through Jesus Christ. Jesus is the way, the truth, and the life. No man comes to the Father but by him. He is the access to God. And we have direct access. We can go boldly to the throne of grace. Notice it doesn't say you have to go through a priest or a religion. We, each one of us, can go boldly to the throne of grace because Jesus made the way. For each one of us and come boldly and so we're supposed to come uh after we receive jesus christ as our savior we don't have that right we don't have that access if we've never received jesus we're outsiders we're enemies from god the bible says and jesus is that way to get there and the third one is one i want to focus on is down in verse 22 it says let us draw near with a true heart in full assurance of faith, having our hearts sprinkled from evil conscience and our bodies washed with pure water. The third way we're supposed to come is clean. 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 That's very important. He mentions a couple different things are supposed to be clean. First, our hearts. Our hearts are supposed to be clean. Verse 22, let us draw near with a true heart. In With a true heart. What does it mean, a true heart? Well, it's, it's not a deceptive heart. It's a, it's, a, it's a pure heart. It's a true heart. It's not faking things. Uh, it says in Matthew 5, you can turn there if you like, but, of course, Matthew 5, it says, Blessed are the pure in heart, for they shall see God. You know, children are kind of have, have, have more of that simple, pure heart, but adults many times get a bunch of baggage and not, their hearts aren't true. They're, they're doing things selfishly. They're doing things uh, with pretense. They're doing things uh, to put in a show. They're doing things uh, because they want something. But, but God says, I want you to come with a true heart. I want you to be real. I want you to not put on an act. I want you to be sincere. 
You know, God doesn't mind if you come to him and say, Lord, I am weak and I, I'm, I'm really struggling, Lord, and I just, I just wish I was stronger. You deserve better, but I'm not doing well, and I need your help in this thing because, Lord, I just am not strong to do this. I've, I've been failing you. God doesn't mind you coming like that. That's a true heart. It's the not true heart. It's not the pure heart. It's the heart that lies. It's the heart that won't deal with reality. It's the heart that deceives its own self and says it's good when it's not. It's the heart that's proud and says, you know, it is really wrong that I do this, God. It's, it's fine. You know what? <clears throat> I, I have a right to do this, and it's, it's just the way I was brought up. And that's not a, that's not a pure heart. It, 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 it's not a true heart. It, it's putting on an act. It says, come, come to me, but come real. You know when someone is lying to you and you know they're lying? And, and, and you talk to them and you say, look, I know this isn't true. And they still hold on to it. <clears throat> and, and just how much it disgusts you. And you're just like, why are you doing this? Why? Look, I know it's not true. And we're not going to get along while you do this. So be real. Most of us can deal with somebody who just says, look, you know what? I mean, you know, you know how many people have told me? I just wish someone would just walk up and say, hey, I don't like you. Okay. Let's just get it out there because I know you don't like me. You're talking to everybody about me. You're criticizing me. Just, you know, but then I walk up to you and I say, hey, do you have a problem with me? No, I, 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 I like you, man. We're, we're, we're great. And then they walk away and say, I can't stand them. Look, <laughs> I would rather the person say, I hate your guts than just be a liar in front of my face and talk about me behind my back. Well, I don't want either one. But you know what I'm talking about? Be real. And, and go to God and say, Lord, I, I can't stop this sin. I like it. That's, that's, a, that's, a, that's a pure heart. That's a, that's a true heart. <clears throat> but boy, and, and I, I'm not good at that because I'm, I'm so simple. People have all kinds of things going on, all kinds of little tricks and deceptions. And I'm trying to do this and maneuver this, and I'm trying to do this. And, and, and look, I guess people like doing it with people, and they're trying to pull one over on this. They're trying to scam this. They're trying to just get this person to impress them and seem like there's something out with them. I don't get all that stuff. I, I'm, not, I'm, not, I'm too simple. To me, if I want somebody to think I'm this, and I think that's good to be like that, I will become that. They put more effort into acting like there's something than it takes to become that. I don't understand that. Be real. <laughs> Be real. But they. But I just want to tell you, it doesn't work with God. God's going to go, I, you're lying. You're being dishonest. You're blaming somebody else. You're, you're, you're talking about yourself like to me like, I know you're not. Come with a true heart. Like, I know what's going on. I, I, come, be real. Be honest. Have a real heart. Don't come with deceit. Don't come with fake motives. Be real. Even when you're in need, it says, look, find grace to help in time of need. First of all, come with a pure heart, a heart pure from an evil conscience. Verse 22, let us draw near with a true heart in full assurance of faith, having our hearts sprinkled from an evil conscience. From an evil conscience. Having our hearts sprinkled from an evil conscience. See, your conscience is telling you one thing, but the heart is desperately wicked and deceitful above all things. Uh, I think it's Jeremiah 17, 9. And, and that heart is, is wicked. And, 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 and your conscience is, is sitting there saying, look, you're doing wrong. You know, what? Paul said, I, I hear and exercise myself always to have a conscience clear offense towards God and man. A clean conscience. A pure conscience. That that, 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 that that heart is not fighting against the conscience that's inside of you. And and, and you, you deal you're dealing with things. You're not having a secret life. You're you're maybe getting some counseling if you need it. You're 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 coming to God in honesty. You're confessing your sin to God. You're not you're not living a fake life. And your heart is 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 cleansed from a from a, a a conscience that's hurting you, that's saying you're not doing right, and a conscience that's not guilty, and you don't have an evil conscience. Why? Because you've dealt with things. You've been honest with God. You've come to God properly. You've been real. You've been honest with God. 
And, and why wouldn't you be? He's a merciful, kind, and loving God. He knows what's going on. And he says, hey, if you need grace to help, I'll give you grace to help. If you need mercy, I'll give you mercy. The best thing you can do is just be real with God. Lord, I'm having anger problems. I'm bitter right now. Okay. It's a lot better than, Lord, kill them. You know, there's nothing wrong with me praying you kill them. They deserve it. No. To be honest, Lord, they hurt me and I'm angry and I know I shouldn't be this. That's okay. <laughs> I don't know why people don't do that. God knows it anyway. <laughs> he knows it anyway. And you're not going to be able to pull one over on him like maybe you could with your parents or, your, or the coworkers or your spouse. We're supposed to have, have that uh, evil conscience and, and that our heart's all purified and, and really dealing with issues. Come to God with honesty about your situation, your issues, your troubles, and, and just deal with it. Second thing it says, we said, first of all, hearts, and, 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 and it associates the evil conscience with our hearts. It says having our hearts sprinkled from an evil conscience. And then it says having our bodies washed with pure water having our bodies washed with pure water. <clears throat> and, and, and so why does it say that? The Bible does not say cleanliness is close to godliness, by the way. That verse isn't in there. Um, and uh, by, by the way, that would be a cruel thing to God to say, look, I, 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 sometimes I go to the third world. And you can take as many baths as you want. You're going to be dirty in a half hour. <laughs> okay? There are certain people that, you, that no matter how hard they try, it's, life's dirty in their country. And, 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 and things like that. But, but, but it says having our bodies washed with pure water. you got to take the context here. The context here is the sacrifices in Hebrews chapter 10 and how they did this thing. And then it's coming into the holy of holies. And it says, hey, enter into that throne. Enter into the holy of holies. But if you follow that process and you go back, and let me take you to Leviticus chapter <clears throat> uh, tw uh, Let's see. Um, uh, let's go to Exodus chapter 30 first. Exodus chapter 30. In the context of this, so when you would come and you would be going, um, Exodus 30, when you come in the Old Testament, you're going to go into the, into the, uh, into the, the temple or in the tabernacle, either one. You would, uh, if, if the tabernacle is, is, is here at the side of the pulpit here, um, you would be out in the, in the courtyard out here and coming before you went through the door uh, into the temple to do the service if you were a priest. On the outside, what was called is the laver. The laver was basically a wash basin, a big wash basin. And, and, and this laver, you had to cleanse yourself before you went inside is required, required very strongly. Uh, let's read uh, Exodus and uh, chapter 30, and it will show us this. And uh, in verse 17, and it says, the Lord spake unto Moses, saying, Thou uh, shalt also make a laver of brass, and his foot uh, uh, also of brass, um, to wash withal, and thou shalt put it between the tabernacle of the congregation and the altar, and thou shalt put water therein. For Aaron and his sons shall wash their hands and their feet thereat. And they shall go into the tabernacle of the congregation and shall wash with water, yet they die not. Or when they come near to the altar to minister, to, bur uh, to burn offerings made by fire unto the Lord, so they shall wash their hands and their feet, that they die not. And it shall be a statute forever to them, even to him that ha and to his seed throughout all generations. Wow, it's pretty strong. And look, if you don't wash yourself before you walk in and start doing the service of God in the temple or in the tabernacle, you'll die. It's a symbol, of course, of coming into God's presence with sin and dirt. God says, I'm a holy God. That's why nobody can go into heaven. It's, a, it's, a, it's, a, it's work salvation. As you come before God dirty, God says you can't come. The wages of sin is death. And you can't come into God's presence. And so you've got to be washed before you go into there and, and cleanse yourself and, and before you uh, bring your sacrifice into God's presence. Now let me take it way forward to 1 Peter in chapter 2, way in the New Testament. So before they did the sacrifice, before they did the service, 
in the temple or in the tabernacle, depending on which was there at the time, um, they had to go and wash themselves before they went in there. But God says, you know, uh, I did away with all the sacrifices and I did away with the killing of the animals because that couldn't really cleanse man. And Jesus did it once for all. But he says, we still bring offerings and sacrifices to God, but in a different way. First Peter in chapter 2 and verse 5, he also as lively stones are built up a spiritual house and holy priesthood, all believers, to offer up spiritual sacrifice acceptable to God by Jesus Christ. So you now are called, uh, well, I'll take Revelation 1 to show it, keep your finger there, but Revelation 1, 5, it, God has made us priests now. Those priests used to go into the temple, that's us now. And we do the service of God, and we're being sacrificed to him. We come boldly to the throne of grace, and we do that. <clears throat> and uh, in, in Revelation, and it says this in a few different spots, but uh, in verse uh, Revelation, and... Uh, let me find it. Revelation chapter 1 and verse 5, it says, And from Jesus Christ, who is a faithful witness, the first begotten of the dead, uh, and, of the, uh, and of the prince of the kings of the earth, unto him that loved us and washed us from our sins in his own blood, and hath made us kings and priests unto God and his Father, to be the glory for, uh, 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 to him be the glory and dominion forever and ever. Amen. It says God's made us kings and priests. When you became a Christian, you became a king and a priest. You became uh, a, a, a joint heir with Christ, and you became uh, a priest who can go into God's presence now and do him stuff. But it says now we bring spiritual sacrifices. For example, we bring a sacrifice of praise. We bring a sacrifice of giving. We bring a sacrifice of love. And we come before his presence and we give him these things. And we come into his presence and we come boldly to the throne of grace to get mercy and we pray. So we come and so God symbolizes prayer as coming into God's presence. And he says, hey, hey, it's like the priest though. I gave you a symbol there. That labor's in the way in. And just like the priests had to wash themselves, make sure your body's washed. But he's talking in the spiritual context here, that you're like that. We are now bringing spiritual sacrifices, and spiritually we're supposed to be washed. We see in, in Revelation 1 and verse 5, it says, Who has washed us from our sins in his own blood. The first way you're washed is in salvation. The first way you're washed is in salvation. There's so many verses um, we, we could show you here, but it says it right there real clearly. I'm going to leave out some verses, but Titus 3, 5, not by works of righteousness, which we had done, but according to his mercy at the saved us, by the washing of regeneration and renewing of the Holy Ghost. You're washed by the blood of Jesus Christ. What can wash away my sins? Nothing but the blood of Jesus. So you are washed through salvation when you receive Jesus Christ as your Savior. His blood that was shed for you washes your sins away, and now you are cleansed, and you can walk into the throne of grace. You can go into God's presence, and you have a right to pray. You can go into God's presence and bring Him a spiritual sacrifice of love or praise or whatever sacrifice, and everything you do is say, I love you this much, Jesus. Here's something for you. And you give Him these, these sacrifices of praise. You, you cleanse yourself though before you come to him you make sure you're saved and we already covered that a little bit but understand that jesus talked about that he said if i don't wash you you have no part in me and peter said oh then wash my whole body you just don't wash my feet but if if, if you've got to wash me before i have a part in you then wash all of me in john 13 and jesus teaches them that you've got to be washed you've got to have that but the second thing he talks about in cleansing is is a separation from that which is filthy go to second corinthians so we're finding out that before we, we have the access, we have the right to be there, but you're supposed to approach properly to make sure you've received Jesus Christ and you have a right to be there. In, in 2 Corinthians in chapter 6, it says, because we have this access to God and we are saved, it says God doesn't have any part with evil. And it says in verse 17, in 2 Corinthians chapter 6 and verse 17, Wherefore, come out from among them, and be ye separate, saith the Lord, and touch not the unclean thing, and I will receive you. 
and I will be a father unto you, and you shall be my sons and daughters, saith the Lord Almighty. Having therefore promises, dearly, these promises, dearly beloved, let us cleanse ourselves from all filthiness of the flesh and spirit, perfecting holiness in the fear of God. The fear of God. By the way, you will not become completely uh, 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 holy as a Christian until you learn to fear God also. You're supposed to love God, yes, but you should also fear God. And, and, and please don't say this. That doesn't mean you're supposed to be afraid. The word's phobos, from phobia. It means to be afraid of. And you should say, you know what? I love God. I want to serve him. He's my God. He's, I, I want to do what he wants me to do. And you know what? I also know that it's a fearful thing to fall in the hands of a living God. New Testament. Hebrews. You should fear God. Don't mess with God. I hope you don't even have to fear him because you love him and you do what he says. But understand, don't mess with God. Just like, just like a, a good parent. You say, I love him. I want to obey my parents. And I know also, dad's got a belt. No, no, I'm sorry. Dad's got a timeout corner. We're in 2019. And trust me, God doesn't give you timeout corners. He's smarter than that. And God doesn't count one, two, two and a half, two and three quarters. God says, it's a fearful thing. You know how mama gives you that look? God's got that look. And don't mess with them. Perfecting holiness in the fear of God. He says, having these wonderful promises to enter into God's presence, let's cleanse ourselves from that filthiness. Touch not the unclean thing. No wonder it says, the, the, this is pure religion in James, and undefiled before God and the Father is this, to visit the fatherless and widows in their affliction and to keep himself unspotted from the world. Don't even give me a, a, a splatter of that, that stuff on me. Good old-fashioned biblical holiness that churches don't believe in anymore. But God still does. Holiness. It says, look, cleanse yourself from that filthiness. Touch not the unclean thing. Don't touch that and I'll receive you. You might be glad to give me a hug unless I'm covered with grime and filth and dirt. If, I, if I've been, it, when I went out and I had to redig my septic system and dug a big trench and, 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 and I already had a septic system there. So guess what? And I was covered. And my wife, I had to be submissive. She would not let me come in the house until I got hosed off. And you might say, Pastor, give me a hug. You know what? I bet if I hugged you that day, you wouldn't want to hug me. Why? Because I had filth on me. And God's standing there in a white suit. And you know when you wear the white clothes, the dog jumps on you, right? And God says, Hey, don't touch that unclean stuff. You're going to come to me. You're going to, we're going to come and spend some time together. We're real close. So don't come filthy. It's not appropriate. Yeah. Don't touch the unclean thing. So it says, hey, having these wonderful promises, God's going to be a father to us. We're going to be close. God will receive us. Having, therefore, these promises, dearly beloved, let us cleanse ourselves from all filthiness of the flesh and spirit, perfecting holiness in the fear of God. Let's get ourselves appropriate to come into God's presence. Let's deal with stuff. So we say, you say, man, I need some help with that. I'm, I, I've got some dirt. I've got some of the flesh. I've got some of the filth of the world on me. And the Bible says, hey, God, God will help you first in salvation, but he'll help you sanctify yourself. He gives you tools. For example, the Bible. Just a, a little bit ahead of this, let me read Ephesians 5, verse 26. We call it a Bible bath. When you've got a lot of filth in your life and you need to cleanse yourself, you know what you need? You need a whole bunch of the Word of God because the Bible says the Bible will wash you like water. And Ephesians 5, and verse 26, it says that he might sanctify and cleanse it, talking about us, the church, with a washing of water by the Word. The word of God washes you. John 17, 17, sanctify them through thy truth. Thy word is truth. God cleanses us. The Bible, look, we're in a filthy world. Nobody's ever needed as much Bible as we do in this generation. We need a lot of Bible. We need the Bible to wash us just from what we see driving down the road. Goodness. Let alone we hear. And, and even when you're trying to be good, it just that you get splashed a lot in the world we live in. And we need washed, and we're not very strong. And sometimes, you ever tried to, you ever tried to clean yourself when, when, you're, when your cloth is already dirty? You already blew your nose enough times in that thing? 
And, and, and look, we need God to wash us. We need his word to wash us. And the word of God will cleanse you and just confess your sin to God and say, Lord, I need to come and talk to you and spend time with you, Lord. And Lord, I just want to tell you, I got some things. I just want to, I want to wash myself for a sec. Let me confess some things to you. Maybe, maybe start cleansing your life a little bit. Start getting rid of some things and dealing with some issues that have been dirty and you've accepted in your life and take off those filthy clothes and put on the new righteousness that God gives you. And, and, and don't touch the unclean thing and get, go burn some stuff in your house. Go get rid of some trash and come to God appropriately. And then get in the Bible and let the Bible start changing you. I'm just saying you might not be strong. You might not know everything you need to know. You might not know, be, know how to cleanse yourself. I'm just telling you, you get a bath in the Word of God and you spend a lot of time in the Bible every day, you will find yourself getting clean even if you're not strong. The Bible has an amazing power. Just put it on your cell phone and just go to bed listening to it at night and, and listen to it at different times and read your Bible and just spend time in it. Whether you understand it or not, it's the washing of the water by the Word. I don't need to understand all the chemical processes. If I stand underneath the water, underneath the waterfall, I'm going to get clean. Let's go to Psalm 24 and finish up there. Just come to God's presence. It says, let's go there. Let's go into God's presence. He's made the access there. But come appropriately. Don't come disrespectfully. I wonder, Jesus, when he prays, he says, when you pray, say, our Father which art in heaven. That's some reverence. That's a, that's a lost word today. Reverence. Our Father which art in heaven. He's not pops. Okay? We're losing our reverence for God. But come to him with, appropriately. Realize who you're talking to. Psalm 24 tells who's going to get close to God. And uh, among other passages we could read. Um, but, but, but. We'll finish up there because it kind of summarizes what we've said. Psalm 24 and verse 3. It says, Who shall ascend into the hill of the Lord? Or who shall stand in his holy place? He that hath clean hands and a pure heart. We just kind of read that, didn't we? And who hath not lifted up his soul into vanity, nor sworn deceitfully. He shall receive the blessing from the Lord and righteousness from the God of his salvation. It's the same thing. God says, come on in. And come boldly. I want you to be here. Now, let's, let's be appropriate. Make sure you're saved. Confess your sins. Start, start dealing with some stuff. Don't embrace the wicked stuff. At least drop your filth. Don't bring that bucket in here. It's full of garbage. Leave, leave it out there. You can talk to me about it in here. But don't, don't bring that in. You know, that, that coat, you've been rolling around in the mud. Take that coat off. Don't embrace it. I know you're a sinner. I know you have that. You come into my throne. We'll help you get rid of that. But but don't don't come in here with your acceptance and 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 haughtiness of your sin. Don't come in here accepting it. If I regard iniquity in my heart, the Lord will not hear me. The Bible says. So you have a right to come into God's throne. Just come appropriately. Come appropriately. And, and he says, it, it, it'll be wonderful. And in Hebrews 10, he says, you can have all that, but let us come with a pure heart. Let's, let's come with a true heart. Let's come, don't try to pull, pull, pull one over on God. <laughs> and, and to be honest and real, and, and come to God, and he'll receive you. Let's pray. Father, thank you for the chance to come clean, and I pray we do that with you and understand uh, how you approach this thing. I pray we realize that you don't accept everything when humans don't deal with things when they're not honest, when they're not saved, when they haven't received Jesus Christ. And I pray tonight we'd understand your word, and I pray that we'd approach you properly, understand you love us, you, you'll accept us, you'll receive us through the righteousness of Jesus Christ. But Lord, we can't just accept and drag into your presence our garbage. we got to leave some stuff out and, and confess it and talk to you about it and, and deal with things honestly, Lord. And I pray... We would deal with things, and I pray we'd come before you with true hearts. I pray we confess our sin, and you're faithful and just to forgive us our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. I pray that we would uh, just, uh, just enter into those wonderful promises. What a wonderful thing to, be able to go into your presence and get help and get cleansed and to walk with you and love you. What a wonderful thing it is to bring a spiritual sacrifice a free will offering 
something to say we love you and, and we appreciate you. And we just come properly, Father. And I pray tonight we'd get this and we'd come clean and be real. And thank you for the word that teaches us these things. Thank you for all these concepts that are repeated all throughout your word. And thank you for Jesus who washed us in his own blood. Thank you for that in Jesus' name.